Hello, Mr. Chris. Hey, how are we doing? Good. I'm good, on good, a little good. bit of a slow internet connection today, so I'm going to go, you're not going to see my live face. You get my goggled face. Oh, darn. <clears throat> Thank God for small favors. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have 8.30 and that's our start time. So we're gonna kick this off. Um, and we thought what we would do is, is um, present this uh, as the, the 10 questions that we most commonly get. Actually, we probably get 100 variations of each of these questions, <clears throat> but honestly, the answer is the same or pretty much the same or similar uh, every time. So we uh, we want to we want to kind of look at these as a group, and you know, a lot of these are are they're very interconnected, uh, just one way or another. On the top, on the bottom, they they all work together pretty much. So um, so some parts of the answer might be in some other part of the question, depending on how you hear this. <clears throat> but you know, we've we've presented a lot of these. Uh, We've done a lot of these webinars. Uh, they're on our blog. They're on YouTube. You can go back and see them in great detail. But you know, honestly, I, when I watch a webinar, I watch a half an hour or an hour webinar. I mean, I can't remember the 27 points the speaker made. I remember a few of them, so I have to keep going back over and over. And eventually, you pick something up, or you you learn something new, and you have one more brick that you built on, and then. Uh, other answers become more clear. So let's kind of shoot through this and see where we end up. So obviously, <laughs> this is the question we get the most. Why do wireless mics drop out? Um, we have done several deep dives into this, but um, <clears throat> basically it's because your radio doesn't get a signal that is strong enough and clear enough for it to understand the difference between your intended transmission and all the rest of the noise that's out there. So uh, out of range, which doesn't mean distance, <clears throat> um, antennas that, are, that aren't properly polarized or angled to each other and reflections within the room. And so these three things combine to give your receiver um, information that it can't quite figure out. It's got the information, but it can't quite, it doesn't know what you intend for it to hear. And so it just says, I give up. So um, it, that kind of looks like this. Your signal just has to be stronger. It needs to be about 20 dB stronger than whatever the accumulative amount of garbage right at the frequency you are trying to tune to is. So it's different across the band. You know, there are high spots and low spots, but it kind of looks like this. There's, there's just noise on the planet from every radio that's turned on, from every computer chip that's turned on, from every motor that's turned on. I'm probably forgetting some things, LED lighting, power supplies, uh, and cosmic junk from outer space. So that all, that's always present around us. And uh, then of course, uh, we have to worry about high power transmission from uh, over the air television. And uh, we have to now consider things that are out of band a bit more than we had to before. And that's uh, 5G cell phone service. And in particular, that's T-Mobile 5G cell phone service. The AT&T, Verizon, the other the other higher band stuff doesn't bother our wireless mics virtually at all anymore. So you have to get your signal stronger than the noise floor by 20 dB. And of course, the simple answer would be, well, let's just turn up the power. Well, we have legal, we have limits that we can turn the power up to. And when we turn the power up, it makes it worse for everything else. So Turning the power up would work for one wireless microphone, but if you got two, if you turn the power up on one, you'll make the second one worse. So this is what we need to do. We need to get a clear, strong signal back to, um, back to our receivers. Um, <clears throat> hey, I've got all this stuff. Is it going to work? And the answer is, well, it depends exactly what your stuff is and, 
and, uh, and where you put it. And what is the range of my system? So these two questions kind of go hand in hand. And again, back to range in the first thing. So range does not equal distance, okay? That's a, that's a factor in it, but that's not, that's not the only thing we're measuring, distance and power. Because right now, if you turn your, your radio receiver on, you are picking up wireless mics that are in China but they're so low, they're so far down in that noise that, that your radio can't pick them out. If you happen to, somebody happened to be tuned on a frequency you've set your receiver to, your receiver couldn't decode it. So <clears throat> this is kind of like if I ask you, you know, stand outside, how far can you see, right? And the answer is it depends how foggy it is, right? Or things like that. Because there's a, there's a distance your eyes work at and then there's, there are things you have to overcome. And that's the bigger part of this, is that your radio is actually sending a signal, but it's so, it's so buried in the noise, or at least it's not standing out of the noise enough that your radio says, yep, that's what I need to do and do it. So your radio just quits, right? So it's kind of, it, again, it'd be like, all right, it's bad analogy time. But, you know, if you walk up to a piano and you play middle C, it'd be real easy for you to sing that note back. There it is. Uh, but if you walk up to the piano and, you, you know, you play it with both arms down and you, and you cover 20 notes at a time, it's going to be hard to figure out which one is C, right? So how do you sing it back when you're hearing all this, you know, cacophony of, of sound all together at the same time? That's the same thing that happens with your radio. So we need to... We need to do the things that um, that keep our dynamic uh, our, our dynamic range up, our, our the level of our intended transmitter, well above the level of all the rest of the GAC that's going on in the room. And here, here's here's a, a a graph of that. So you see that noise floor at the bottom. So I put a red line. Obviously, that's not solid. Um, there are spots in between there. If you can find one of those spots, then you can go with a little lower power. But usually what we do, especially if we need to set up multiple microphones, is we sort of say, okay, the noise floor is here. And we'd like to be 20 dB above that. So you can see in this graph, by the way, the big block in the middle, uh, that would be a television station. And uh, you're just not going to have power in this case you're just not going to have power in a wireless microphone to be 20 db above that so but you can see there's some examples where there's four wireless microphones and they're well above that threshold uh like i said 20 db is about a minimum that sort of puts your toes up to the edge of the cliff but in a good system you might be 30 or 40. i don't mean a good system i mean a good setup a, you know based on your venue you're probably well above that because obviously it's a whole lot more comfortable to be 20 feet back from the edge of the cliff than to be right on the cliff. So this is this is what we have to do. Uh, this is what increases our range. So obviously, as you as your mics, if we're looking at this picture, whatever distance those wireless mics are, if I move them farther away from the antenna, that signal's going to drop. So I can keep backing up until that signal drops about to where I hit that green line, and then it starts getting pretty chancy. So that, you know, that, that has to do with your distance, because again, you know, if we're talking about being on top of a mountain in Idaho with, I've got this wireless mic, on top of that mountain in Idaho, the range is gonna be a whole lot farther than it is in downtown Manhattan, right? Uh, and, you know, in downtown Manhattan, you might get 50 feet on top of that mountain, you might get a quarter of a mile on a good day. So, but it's the same, it's the same wireless mic, nothing changed. What changed is the relationship of your mic to the noise floor. So as the noise floor goes up and down, that's going to limit the practical use of your, of the range of your system. Um, but to give you an answer for your personal system, we came up with this uh, performance calculator. Excuse me. So what this does, what engineers do, we, we, 
gather a bunch of data and we, we make up a, what they call a link budget. And this, these are all the things. So when you, if somebody calls me and they say, will this antenna go that far? Will this, how far can I run a piece of coax? How, you know, it depends on all these other things. So what you do is you go to our webpage and I believe at the top of every single page, no matter where you get twisted, you're gonna find that round button that says wireless performance calculator. When you click on that, it takes you to this page and everything here is a drop down box. So you don't have to measure anything. You don't have to get a tape measure out and measure distance. Because for example, in distance, it's gonna ask you less than 25 feet, 25 to 50, 50 to 75. I mean, if we gotta be close, you know, if you need to know whether 76.2 feet or 68 point, you know, you're in trouble. <laughs> you're, you're never gonna be that close. So in, in, uh, in kind of, um, practical terms, you're going to click all these boxes and there's a big long list of things in each one of these boxes. And then you hit the calculate button down at the bottom. And if you get a green light, that means you will have more than 20 dB of, of uh, dynamic range. Uh, if you get the yellow light, your system might work, but I wouldn't, it's not going to just not going to be reliable. And if you get the red light, then you're going to need to switch something. One of these factors needs to get switched. And this is how you can play with it. So you, you can see, well, just, you know, keep, keep adding length to your coax cable and you'll see where your cutoff is. So if you're only worried about 75 feet and you put it in 75 and you get a green light, you can go to 100, you get a green light, you can go to 125 and get a green light, you go to 150 and now you get a yellow light. You go, oh, so there's kind of, I've got a little play in this and you can kind of, you can kind of uh, rejigger your system so that it works out and you get a green light. But this is very easy, no math. Um, now we do have on our blog, you know, how to do this, um, you know, the, the, a better way. So this is an estimator, but it's pretty darn close. Um, if you really want to know to a decimal point, then you can go to our blog. You can use the the, the long form, um, which you do have to make a bunch of measurements and you do have to put in precise numbers um, and, and get an answer. But this is really simple, really simple. Take you a minute to do this and you're gonna know pretty well whether your system is gonna work or not. Okay, this is one I get all the time, um, especially if you have Sennheiser wireless mics and I'm not, I'm not bagging on Sennheiser. Um, what happens is when you, um, when you add a new antenna, like a, a diversity fin, and you add antenna distros, you're, you're getting a stronger signal back to your radio. And um, what, what, why you hear noise when it's turned off is that your squelch is not properly set. So when you get a new wireless mic and you take it out of the box, the squelch is set from the factory to match the performance of the little whip antenna, which isn't very good. Now you put in a professional antenna system and antenna distro, you get a stronger signal. So that signal might be 6 dB stronger, or might be 10 dB, just depending on how you did this. It's stronger, right? So, um, it, it's, uh, it means if it's 6 dB stronger, that means your squelch setting is 6 dB off because it was set for a weak antenna. You just have to reset it uh, to another antenna. And this is, this is just the same thing that happens um, with audio, with a, with a microphone, with a wired microphone, right? You plug, it into your, you plug it into your mixer, you plug in a condenser mic, and then you plug in and then you take that off and you plug the dynamic mic on the same thing. And most dynamic mics aren't as, aren't as powerful. And so your level's going to drop way down. Or I guess I should have said that the other way around. Um, you plug in the condenser and it's going to be bigger. And all of a sudden you're clipping the mic preamp. Just, it's just gain structure. There's nothing wrong. You just need to reset uh, your system because what happens is these microphones, they look for something specific in that signal. And when they don't get it, they turn up and they look, even, hey, I should look even farther. Hey, I should look even farther. And eventually you're seeing that noise. 
So setting the squelch basically tells your receiver how far you're going to let it search, right? So there's no, there, uh, resetting your squelch, raising your squelch level, right, um, it is a good thing to do. The only thing you can do wrong is if you have great distance to cover, if you're, if you're trying to pick up somebody on the other end of a football field, well, you can't, you can't raise your squelch too much because you do need that distance. But again, um, if we're back on top of that mountain in Idaho and our wireless mic's going a quarter of a mile and, and our transmitter is only going to be 30, 50, 100 feet away, why would I want my antenna to be able to look out a quarter of a mile? Inevitably, it's going to find junk and that junk's going to add to your noise floor and you know lower your dynamic range. So the squelch setting um, with the transmitters turned off. Now, as soon as you turn the transmitter on, this should lock up, but it, um, these systems have this noise gate built into them that basically it says when the, the signal is so, so, so low, I just don't want to hear it. Just turn it off and then bring it back up as soon as the signal rises a little bit. And that way you don't hear all the, the background hiss. So that's what you're, that's what you're seeing. Um, so you just, you just adjust the squelch setting. And now we have a, we have a blog post for this. So if you want to dive into this in great detail, go to our, go to our website, go to the blog and scroll through the, the, uh, the blog posts and there's a squelch setting or you can just search RF venue and squelch and Google take you right to it. Okay. Can I mix RF venue products with other brands? So for some reason, <laughs> people believe that, uh, hey, all the logos need to match. Well, they don't. We're all using the same RF. RF is a universal cosmic force, right? Nobody has a proprietary RF, right? It's, it's just, you know, good old fashioned electromagnetic waves. And we're all using the same thing. So as far as RF venue products, understand that we're in the business of, of collecting the signal from your transmitter and getting it to your receiver. And that's what we do. We, we provide your receiver with a nice, clean, strong signal. Um, what your receiver chooses to do with that afterwards is a function of your receiver, right? So, uh, I'm not saying that, you know, you can mix, you know, you can use a different brand of transmitter and receiver, or even sometimes within the same line, but you can mix brands. So in this case, I don't know what they got here. Some Sennheisers and some Audio Technicas all hooked up to the same distro. Pardon me. It doesn't matter whether they're quote unquote analog or digital because all RF energy is analog. What's, what's digital about it is the, is the coding, is the language it's sent in, right? But just like, just like with your PA system, you, know, you got a mic, you talk into it, sound comes out the speaker. Um, if somebody gets up and speaks a, a foreign language, you don't change the microphone, you don't change the speaker, it comes out the speaker. Now, whether you can understand that foreign language, that's on you, but the system doesn't care. So it simply doesn't care and especially in the United States and, and, you know, which I can speak for, and I seriously imagine almost everywhere in the world, <clears throat> you can only buy, in the U.S., you can only buy stuff in certain bands with certain power. So it's all calculated to all work. Uh, you, the store can't sell you something that isn't legal to operate, and therefore it's going to mix with all the other brands. So anyway, you don't have to worry about logos. It makes zero difference. Um, uh, there, there's some people with some new stuff that are trying to intimate that you have to use theirs, but it's not so. We've done it, we bought it, we used it, we knew it was going to work, and of course it does. So pretty simple. Um, there's a little confusion about this. Um, so the FCC rules changed as of July 2020, and here's what you can use um, in terms of of uh, UHF wireless mics. So the, the main band that we work in is 470 to 608 in the US. Sorry to anybody from outside. There's 
like 196 different sets of rules around the world and I can't keep up with them. <laughs> but in the US, 470 to 608 um, at 50 milliwatts or less doesn't require a license. Um, there are some exceptions. There's a little bit that you can use above 608 and there's a little bit that you can use in the middle of the 600 band. But I'm gonna tell you, just because you can use it doesn't mean it's gonna work when you get there. This stuff is gonna get gobbled up by professional big time, you know, TV station broadcaster, news people, um, that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's nice that, you know, that maybe your radio can tune there. And to be legal, on those other bands, you, you have to be able to actually specifically tune there. So just because your radio will tune, let's say to 650, if it'll tune from 640 to 680, it's illegal. To use that band, you have to have a radio that only tunes between those two frequencies. You know, what does that mean? Well, I don't know, I'm not giving legal advice, but, um, but your radio is, is technically illegal, even though you can tune to one of those bands. And <clears throat> the point of it is very soon, if, if it's working now, you know, plan on getting something new because it's not gonna work very long. It's gonna get overrun. You know, they turned on some more 5G some time back. And, you know, as everybody gets new cell phones with 5G in them, this is gonna get tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh, so, um, while you can use it, um, don't count on it. And of course, there's other stuff. There's, you know, there's VHF, uh, which is where the old TV stations used to be. There's 2.4, there's five gigahertz. Um, there's a new band called DEC that's in the 1900s that's mainly for like speech systems for like for boardrooms and that kind of stuff. But 470 to 608 is really where you need to be. Ah, how do I pick the best channels? So this is, this is really important, okay? So RF Venue, we can get you a clean radio signal. We can hand it to you. But again, if it's so foggy around you, the clean signal, your receiver may not work, even though we're giving it a clean signal. Um, there's just too much garbage around you for it to jump out. So. So making wireless microphones is, is, there's two basic sections, getting the signal from transmitter to receiver, and then being able to use that frequency at your venue. That's the part I can't help you with. That's, that's different every time, you know, walk a block down the street and it's different. So it's different every place. But how you pick the best channels. If you're not already doing this, you're going to need to. Depends how many mics you've got. The more mics you've got, and when I say mics, I mean mics and ears, right? So I mean radios, because they all work together. So Sure, Sennheiser, and Audio Technica all have these free programs. And you basically, you tell it what model mics you have. And you can, you, you can mix brands within these too, right? So you can, you can, put your audio technica mics and your sure mics together in the sure one, you can mix them all up. You get it. Um, but you have to be able to, to scan, you have to be able to, to give it data. And the best way to do that is with the scanner. So we make this little portable scanner. There are other scanners. There are better scanners. There are worse scanners. Um, and then with new, with new wireless microphones for the last couple of years, most of them are networkable. In other words, you can plug your receiver into your computer and you can use your receiver as a scanner, but your receiver can only see the block it can tune to. So it can't tell what's next to it. In other words, it's not seeing T-Mobile cell phone service. It's not seeing LED lighting. It's not even seeing the frequencies next to it and the next block up. So it, it only can make decisions based on the data you give it and you're not giving it the best possible data. So that's still, that's better than nothing. This is the best way to do it. Get a scanner of some kind or another, 
scan the data, import it into these programs, and it'll tell you exactly where your mics and your ears should be tuned uh, according to that data. Of course, it changes from day to day, but it shouldn't change a lot for most people. Um, so that's the best way to do it. These, you know, I don't know what, starting 10 years ago, 12 years ago, some of the wireless microphones had auto search. Well, it kind of works, but these days it doesn't work very well for most people in most places. It's better than, than you know, throwing a dart up against a, 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 a wall with a bunch of frequency numbers, but don't count on it. Using, using the calculation programs, uh, the frequency coordination programs is, is orders of magnitude better than that auto scan. So you can go, you can go download these. Um, there's bunches of YouTube videos on how to make these things work. So uh, I, I, if you're not doing this, you know, put this on your calendar. You, you're going to need to move to this uh, if you've got more than a couple of mics. You know, one microphone, well, you could get lucky. But if you got eight microphones or 24 microphones, you ain't going to get lucky. So get one of these programs. We do, however, have we we have a blog that is how to choose frequency blocks. So. For instance, you're in some city somewhere in the country, um, and it's like you're buying new stuff. And it's like, well, I could buy this block, this block, this block, or this block. Where am I likely to have the best choices? And the answer to that is you're likely to have the best choices where there's no television interference. You're not going to overpower a television station. So uh, if you go to this blog on our post, and uh, that we posted, you can, or you can just put that in a Google search or a venue, how to choose frequency blocks, and it'll take you right to it. Um, it's gonna walk you step-by-step step into finding what television stations are in your area. And you're gonna be surprised. There's a whole lot of stuff that you may not be able to get, but it, there's enough of it that it, it's creating higher noise in certain places. So if you have nothing else, no other way to guess, you know, then go to this and, at least it's going to tell you what is a, a good, you know, between here and here. You're going to be, you're going to tune someplace, but how do I know? Should I tune the low end of the band, the middle of the band, high end of the band, the semi high end? This is going to help you at least make good choices when you buy new gear. This isn't going to help you very much if you already own gear. Okay. Uh, okay. So um, this one I get a lot. Uh, people want to know how antennas interact with each other because they do. So for diversity to work, absolutely have to have quarter wavelength between the, the two antennas. Well, you almost can't not do that. You put a pair of these little whips on the back of your receiver and you're going to get six inches. However, I mean, that means diversity is going to work, but you still have a, uh, a storm of interference because when signals run through these antennas, they create magnetism. And so in this case, the, the mag, you're in the other antenna's magnetic field that's imparting junk. And so to get past that, your antennas either need, they need to be probably six to 10 feet away. So really much beyond six feet, you, you get very little difference. The difference between six feet and 25 feet is, is a really small amount. I mean, not that you shouldn't get everything you can, but, you know, it's pretty hard to put your antennas 100 feet apart, right? So, um, so you, you, you do want as much space as you can reasonably get and don't go crazy. So somewhere in a 6 to 10 feet range means that the antenna's magnetic fields aren't interfering with each other. And uh, so that's a good thing to do. Um, and this the same way, this doesn't matter whether, you, whether we're talking receiver antennas or transmitting antennas for your IEMs, because they're both creating the magnetic fields. So this, this, this kind of distance keeps the magnetic interaction down to nearly zero. Um, how to aim antennas. Well, we did a whole webinar on this. If you want to go into it in great detail with lots of drawings and charts and that kind of stuff. Again, it's on our blog post. But of course, 
the number one thing is your antenna has your antenna from your transmitter has to see your antenna from your receiver, right? So you can't mount your antennas in a closet. You can't mount your antennas in another room. You can't mount your antennas, you know, at your at your front of house desk if it's in the back of the room and you're at desk height because there's going to be people in between you. And there's there's two things that radio waves don't like to try to go through. That's metal and water. So human beings are big bags of salty water and our bodies will block RF just as metal does. So you need to get that antenna where it can see. Radio waves do not go around corners. They go in straight lines. So if you think you're picking up from around a hallway, it's because you've had a pool ball bounce 87 times and it made it to there on, on an angle with the reflections. But it's not a direct path. It's not a real good, it's not a real good connection. It might work, but you certainly don't want to do that on purpose. So other than that, I mean, the simple answer is you, you need to point, you need to point your antenna at the transmitter. You're receiving antenna at the transmitter, or in the case of in-ear monitors, you're transmitting antenna at the receivers. And so um, antennas have patterns. So if you use a whip or an omni, it's essentially um, 360 degrees in the horizontal. I mean, we usually don't have people on top of us and below us. So we're usually, we're usually talking sideways distance. So it's picking up everything. Um, well, some people go, well, that's great. I'll pick up everything. And the answer is, well, wait a minute. Let's think about that. That means you'll pick up noise, right? You're picking up all the noise instead of if you use a directional antenna, such as a paddle or a helical antenna, um, they only pick up in one direction. So this is very much like why you would select a cardioid microphone or an omnidirectional microphone. Um, again, you know, if, if, if you've got a singer on stage, I don't want to pick up the audience. The audience is just noise. It's interfering with my signal. I just want to pick up my singer. Um, so, but it just depends. So you basically lay out your room. You take one of these angles. You can see uh, paddles have a 120 degree angle and you just, you point it so it's covering the people on your stage, right? You point it at them. Just like you'd point a microphone. I mean, you're not gonna, if, if, you're, if your singer is north, you don't point your microphone east, you point it north. It's pretty straight uh, forward. And it's the same way. So you just understand what the, what the patterns are in your, um, in your microphone, excuse me, in your antennas and, and point it um, at your, at your uh, transmitters. So that, that one's pretty simple. Uh, and then we get to, uh, uh, best practices for in-ear monitors. So we are seeing a huge growth in the in-ear monitor um, segment of this uh, because once you get used to it, in-ear monitors just so outperform stage monitors uh, that, you know, this is, they're less expensive, they sound better, you know, you can pick up a whole pile of them and put them in a tackle box as opposed to carrying around a bunch of big heavy wedges. So. So um, these are things that are important when you have in-ear monitor systems. Um, you want to tune your mics and your ears at, as far apart from each other as you can. Um, you want to make sure that your transmitting antenna for your IEMs is not pointed at your receiving antennas. So if you're using both, um, both uh, transmitting and receiving antenna, excuse me, they can be on the same wall. Like so back of the house, both pointed at your stage. Okay, that's fine. Or the other way is one of them's at the back of your house pointed towards your stage and the other one's in a wing pointed sideways. So they're 90 degree angles. The worst possible thing you could do would be to put both of them on different sides of the stage pointed at each other because One's, one's pitching and one's catching. So it, it's at that point, it kind of becomes similar to how your microphones are when you point them at a speaker and you get feedback, right? You don't get feedback, but you get, 
you get extra signal, so you get extra noise and all that stuff. Um, you really want to tune them so they're not in the same in the same range. You know, don't get them in the same block. It will. It's not impossible, but it will be enormously difficult to to make them work. Um, and the other one that's not apparent um, is to make sure that your your performers uh, keep the belt packs out of their pockets. Because if you put a belt pack in your pocket, it's going to push the antenna a cloth thickness away from your skin. And the difference between antennas do not like to be up against bags of salt water. The difference between the thickness of a piece of cloth, whatever that is, almost nothing, and putting that on your belt and hanging what does that put it? A half an inch off your skin is going to make in your pocket, you'll lose 40 to 60% of your signal that you'll have if you put it on your belt. So do not put it in your pockets. I guess I should have put it. I also should have put, don't have a cell phone in the pocket right next to your, right next to your uh, unit. When it's that close, your cell phones uh, will be a problem, but cell phones now, the direct signal from cell phones isn't the problem that it used to be with the old, um, you know, 3G, which went off the air a couple of weeks ago, right? So 3G is gone. Those are the ones that interfered, had that horrible noise that, you know, you'd hear in your computer speakers that you'd get buzz, you know, before your phone rang, that kind of thing. So that's, that's pretty well gone. But when it's right next to you, when it's right next to you, um, it, it will overpower your receiver. So you want to keep that off. Um, so real quickly, um, I just want to, this is sort of the, the setup for, um, for mics and ears. So you want to tune them apart. So in this graph at the top, um, I've got, I've got uh, mics on the left-hand side. Those are all the, the red traces. I've got ears up on the right-hand side. Those are all the green traces. And what we want to do is we want, we want the distance from the lowest to the highest inside that cluster. So look at the green the lowest frequency and the highest frequency inside there. That's what's important. I don't care what's in between. They're all in between, but the closer that I can, can bring in the boundaries, um, the better because that distance from the lowest to the highest of either your mics or your ears most creates most of its inner modulation that same width, right? So you can see we've added, we've added that width above and below the, the, the green traces, which are our active signal, the, the little blue ones at the bottom, that's our inner mod. And by spacing them apart, like we've done in the top slide here, they don't interfere with each other. But if we tune, if we tune broadly, if that cluster widens up, you can see it, it's kind of, it's kind of chaotic um, because that's what happens. So again, let's, let's look at the mics. Uh, the, the red lines go from the bottom frequency where there's a blue arrow to the top frequency. So if we take that same distance and add it on top, you can see that that inner mod is making it all the way into the green in ears. And the ears that are spread pretty wide, um, when we take that between the two yellow arrows and drop it down to the bottom, we can see not only does it take up all the space in between, it completely overruns the wireless mics. So I'm not saying that won't work, I'm saying, boy, I don't want to be there when it does because that's going to be, <laughs> I'll be sweating bullets the whole time that it works. And it's probably not going to, you're going to get dropouts. So when you're picking your ears, you want to uh, pick them in a block away from your wireless mic blocks as far as you can. Um, so I, I want to just finish this up by saying we have, you know, this isn't very in depth. I just kind of wanted you to see these questions and sort of the top level answers to them. And you can kind of see how they intersect with each other. And so um, this is, this is if you go to our blog post, so you go to rfvenue.com and you select blogs and down at the bottom, we have, I don't know, how many have we got? 50, 60, 80 blog posts, little chunks. They're not math heavy. Uh, uh, the blog posts themselves are a five minute read. And then we have all these video training sessions 
if you want to dive deep, these are mostly about 40 minutes long. And you're welcome to go look at all those and, uh, and, and get a lot more specifics about if anything caught your attention from the, the questions that we asked. But uh, this is, uh, is really a good place to find uh, more up to, up to the minute, up to date information. You know, you, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of old information and three and four year old information might be wrong. I mean, basic radios never change, but, but the conditions and, and things have. So uh, this is pretty up to date. So we encourage you to go to rfvenue.com slash blog. Will take you to this and you can scroll through all the pages and see all the topics you probably know a lot of these but some of these you may not know or you may not understand deeply and if you really want to understand this is a good place to do it so um we kind of ran over time i got just a few more minutes here rob do we have any questions that are yeah we've completely yeah, we've different than question. what we covered well it goes on with the uh, the blocks you were talking about choosing blocks we have a question from matthew if you're purchasing several channels of mics for a performance venue, would you recommend buying mics in a different frequency block or keep them all in one block? Um, well, if you're going to use ears, then yes, definitely keep them in one block. Um, now, some new radios, some of the more expensive new radios have very wide blocks. You know, if you, if you buy Axiant, sure Axiant that are what, $3,000 a piece, they go all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top, right? So uh, that's a very good thing if you're touring, because every time you get off the bus, you're in a different place. And the block that worked last night may not work tonight. So that, that gives you an advantage there. But, but like I said, if you're, if you're going to use ears ever, then you, you really want to be able to, to separate the blocks, you know, as far apart from each other as possible the you know if you're if you're in a big city um when you when you go to that page you're not going to like the answer that you get the answer may be like almost nothing and you know you get you'll you'll get your choice of bad or worse and that's going to be what you've got in that city you know i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna try to work in the streets of, of los angeles you know, you, you got a mountain 10 miles away with 21 500 kilowatt TV stations bearing down on you with very little empty space. So there's not a great answer for those guys. Um, we have some things that'll help. Being inside will help. Um, but, you know, it, it's tough sledding for those guys. So I hope that answers that. You got one or two more? Sure. Um, question. Is, is it true that high-end digital wireless mics don't cost, cause intermodulation? Heard this from many reps. Well, they cause intermodulation, but it means something different because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, create audio artifacts, right? So um, it, it's, it, you don't have to worry about it as much but yes, it's still the intermod itself will eventually just, you know, f fight your carrier frequency. Um, you know, the intermod starts on your modulated frequency, the, 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 the information that's in your radio wave, it, it starts affecting that. Um, and with digital systems, it doesn't affect that hardly at all, but it gets to a point where it's actually affecting the carrier, the thing that's delivering the information. And so you still have to think about it. And it's still, it's still something you should pay attention to. You should try to work around. I mean, uh, in other words, I want you to be smart and, and do the best practice that you can, because at some point it will become critical, but the point is much higher. One more. One more. Any tips for keeping transmitter antennas away from musical theater actors' bodies? They always need to be hidden. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, I, I'll tell you what, we have, uh, we have, we have uh, lots of issues that come up, you know, uh, actors in plays, um, especially 
uh, you know, with, with female characters because they tend to wear tighter clothes, right? Or um, uh, on the air TV broadcasts, uh, you know, the, the women don't want a bulky thing in the back of their dress, you know? And I mean, we're, we're always fighting. There's a, there's a best way to do this, but it has a visual penalty. And, you know, what's more important to you, that it works or that it looks good? And there's a, you know, that, that, that line is someplace different for everybody. But um, no, some kind, of, some kind of distance is what you need. Uh, you know, it would work even better if you could move it two feet off people, but it's going to look, kind of, that would be kind of like the selfie camera thing. If, if, <laughs> if we had selfie in-air packs off your belt, two feet away from you, they'd work even better. Uh, but there's, no, that's just something we put up with and, and do the best we can. Keep the antenna straight. If you have, um, if you have belt packs that have little, little uh, wire antennas, uh, the cheap and dirty trick is get yourself a little soda straw and stick the antenna in a straw, tape it up somehow. It keeps the antenna straight. That's, a, that's something you can do. But no, nope, you're just gonna have to struggle with that one. Cost, costuming uh, is, is, a, is a problem that we have to deal with, so. All right, so with that, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, as always, um, you're welcome to send in more questions. If you have something really specific, we're happy to answer your questions. Um, so you're, you're welcome to just drop me a line. I'm Don at RF Venue, or you, you can go on our website and, uh, and uh, put your question, if it's a tech question, you just put it in the service tickets and we will get to all of those. We answer all of them um, that we can. <laughs> so happy to do that. And uh, with that, I'm gonna sign off and uh, I thank you all for attending, uh, spending your, your time with us and looking at boring old me. And I hope we picked up a couple more points uh, you know, and we'll keep, keep picking up points and points and points as we go along here and we'll all get better and better. So with that, I'm going to sign off. Nice job, Don. Thanks guys. All right.